I'm starting off with the Super Goop Glow Screen 40 SPF because it's important to protect the skin, but it also gives off a really beautiful glow effect. And that's super important for the latte makeup look going around all over social media. I'm really working this product into the skin and then I'm gonna try out the new e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I heard this was a dupe for the Milk Primer, so I wanted to give this drugstore product a shot. You can see how I'm just pushing this into the skin because if you rub it in, the product can pill and all the skin care and skin cells that are on the face will get mixed with the primer and that will leave an uneven base. Now I'm using the Maybelline concealer in a bronzing warm color and I'm applying this bronzing color where you would normally put the contour color. I'm not contouring with this product but I do want a lot of warmth for this look. Next, I'm going in with the Cover Effects Enhancer Drops and putting a very small amount of product on all of the high points of my face. So that would be above the brows, the tip of the nose, tops of the cheekbones, chin, and I'm also going to put this on my eyelids to act as an eyeshadow. I wanted to try out the new L'Oreal Foundation 2 while I was at the drugstore, and I'm actually in love with this. It is light to buildable coverage in my opinion, which is perfect for this latte look because you can apply as many layers as you need for the desired coverage. Now you can see how crazy the gripping primer is because literally the cover effects drops are not moving when I try to blend them in. I'm using foundation on my sponge to blend everything in and I don't want any harsh lines so I'm really taking my time and looking at how the skin is coming together and stopping as soon as I'm happy with the blend and the coverage. I'll make sure to list everything used down in the description. Even though I tried to show y'all what I'm using, I didn't get everything and um, I'll make sure I will leave the actual color names of each product and everything below. Now I'm going to move to blush and I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier liquid blush and I'm using my blender with this but I really don't like the effect with a blender to be honest. I'd much rather use this with my fingers because I don't know if you guys can see it or not but it took up a ton of product and disturbed the base and no one wants that to happen whenever you're using a bunch of creams and you put all the time and effort to build the base so if you are going to pick up this liquid blush I highly recommend you tap it in with a finger instead of using a blender or a brush. Now going in with concealer and again this is a new product for me and it's also by L'Oreal. I think it was a tad light for this look but I love the coverage and the pigment especially for the price point and it blended out beautifully. At first I used my finger and I'm only placing it under the eye in the inner corner and then I'm diffusing it out more with my blending sponge. Next is my all-time favorite powder and this is the Huda Beauty Powder and my Velour Powder Puff. I'm only placing this powder under my eyes, middle of the forehead, and a tiny bit on the chin. I'm using it to set but also to blur pores so applying the powder where your specific needs are is just what I'm focusing on. Just remember the more powder means a more full coverage look. Using the Morphe Setting Mist, I am going to drown my face. I do this for every client after I apply all the powders because it makes the skin look like skin again. It just kind of eats off all the powders on the top of the skin so that the color is really all that's sitting there. And it's super important to make sure that the skin is completely dry before moving on to the next step because water plus powder equals paste and that's just gonna make a huge mess. Using a super fluffy tulip brush, I am strategically placing my bronzer coming from the outer portion of the face and diffusing it in towards the center. I am not applying the bronzer where, quote, you're supposed to, but more of taking a step back and looking in the mirror to see where there needs to be more warmth for my specific face shape 
and the look that I'm going for. I want this look to be a natural bronzed look versus I'm putting bronzer to complement my bone structure. So I'm really taking my time to diffuse the color. And since I don't get natural sun on my face or neck, it's important to get the backs of the ears and all the way down the neck until it blends to my chest color and my arm color so that it again makes it seem as though I'm not necessarily applying bronzer, but more of the center of my face is just naturally highlighted and dewy. And then I'll move to my eyeshadows. Using a neutral brown shade from the Makeup by Mario palette, I am placing the majority of the shadow down right under the brow bone and then blending it into the bronzer on my temples and all over the lid. Again, I want it to look like the bronze is naturally there and everything else was applied on top. I'm going in with a more red-brown tone and a pencil brush, and I'm smoking out my lash line and winging it out. I love a wing, so this is my personal preference, but if you're not a winged eyeliner fan, focus on applying this shadow just to the lash line with a heavier concentration of saturation on the outer corner. And don't be afraid to blend and use pigment here because eyes tend to get lost, so it's okay to have fun with the pigment. Now I'm using darker brown tones and a super fluffy blending brush to softly enhance the outer corners. Make this as smoky as you want. Always remember to take a step back and look in the mirror to see the progress of the makeup and to see if you're happy with the look as a whole. You can add from there. For some reason the camera missed it, but I did add a brown eyeliner to my waterline and after that I used a very small dome brush and a darker brown color to blend out the lower lash line. I personally like a smoky lower lash line, so I'm not hesitating when it comes to this step. I also extend this lower lash line shadow into the winged out shape on the top eyelid to help with that definition. Using a pencil brush and a softer brown shade from the same palette, I'm diffusing the lower lash line just to soften everything up. The lower the shadow, the smokier the look. And if I skipped this blending step, there would be that harsh, dark line under the eye which really shuts it down or closes it off. And so by diffusing that harsh line, it makes the look more smoky, but it also softens the harshness of that lower lash line. Using a super small angled brush that I got from a paint store, I'm using the darkest brown color in the palette and defining the wing on the upper lash line. I did bring it into my inner corner and extended that line to create a more feline look to the eye, but again, this is super personalized, so do what you like best for your specific eye shape or for your client's eye shape. I'll give my eyelashes a quick curl and then I'm gonna go in with my Velour Mascara.
For the lower lashes, I like to hold the wand vertically and concentrate the product just on the root of the lash and ever so slightly bringing the product down. And now I'm going to use the plant fiber lash in the style Second Nature from Velour. I do have a coupon code for Velour lashes, so make sure you check out the description to save if you're in the market for some awesome lashes. I tried my best to show y'all how I apply false lashes, but it's super tricky when doing it on camera. But what I do is I hold my mirror underneath, usually under my chin. I'm just looking down. And that helps me to be able to see exactly where I'm putting the lash down. So the first place that I put it is right in the center. And then I secure the inner and the outer corners of the lash. I like to do the inner corner first and then pull on the outer corner because that just kind of makes sure that the inner corner isn't pinching or poking and it's not too far in, which kind of makes it obvious that you're wearing false lashes. Once I'm done with my placement, I make sure to pinch them down so that there is not much space between my natural lash and the false lashes. And this kind of makes sure that there's no blank space in between. Then I make sure I'm happy with the liner so that you don't have to see any of the separation between the false lashes and go over a little bit with mascara. So here you can see me putting a little bit more eyeliner just to camouflage the inner corner of those lash bands so it doesn't look like a little bit of lash and then boom, lash on the outer side of the eye. It just makes it seem much more cohesive and natural. I use a clear brow gel to put my eyebrow hairs in the direction that I want them to go. I like mine to be more up in the front and more horizontal on the outer portion and the tail. A little trick that I like to do when it comes to my eyebrows is powdering the inner corner of the brow because it helps to make them look more natural and have more of an ombre coloring where it's lighter on the inner part of the brows and then darker and has that wet look from the brow gel on the outer portion of the brows. With the same fluffy tulip brush, I'm going to apply my blush and I used a more bronze color with a hint of red to make it look like I have been sun-kissed, out in the sun naturally, walking. It's just natural blush. I'm applying that blush color to my temples, the very tops of my cheekbones, and a little bit on my forehead too. When I apply lip liner, I tend to bite my lips together and then pull them taut so I can see the lip line and easily can apply the liner in the specific spot I want it to be. And I have all of my clients do this too when I apply lip liner on them. When it comes to overdrawing your lip line, it's really important to make sure that when it comes to the outer corners, you're following your natural lip line and you can overdraw in the center, upper and bottom lip. Just overdraw a little bit on that center area and then go back to your natural lip line as you go further out. I'm applying a tiny amount of lipstick just in the inner corner and I'm using my finger to blend the liner and lipstick together. For the lip gloss, I used a sheer high shine lip plumper and I'm only putting the gloss in the center of my lips. I don't like it when the gloss is on the outer corners of the lips, so I always apply just in the center, and this gives a nice juicy plump look as well. For my body glow, I use a petal brush and I apply all over the collarbone, down my chest, and onto my shoulders. Once my brow gel has had enough time to dry, I use a felt tip pen on the outer corners of my brows only. And I'm using these to apply small strokes just on the places that need a little help. I am drowning my face with a final setting spray and use a little bit more lip liner just to contour my lips. And this is the finished look. 
So this is my take on the latte look going around crazy all over social media. This is what it looks like on film. I hope you guys liked watching and learned something new.